Hey, Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. What I want to talk about today is ambidextrous shooting. Uh, basically being able to be proficient with both hands. Uh, the reason we want to be proficient with both hands is because, and this is a proper use of the word, it is tactically correct to transition the weapon to the hand of the side you're going to expose on when using cover or concealment. And what I mean by that is if I have a piece of cover that's a right side exposure, it would be tactically correct for me to use my right hand. If I have a piece of cover that exposes to the left side, it would be tactically correct for me to expose to the left side. The reason for that is it minimizes our exposure to the threat. Now as a left-handed shooter, when I want to transition the weapon to my right hand, or as a right-handed shooter when I want to transition the weapon to my left, I open up a gap in the frame, I transition my hand over, and I reestablish my grip. These two lines that I have drawn on my hand, that can be done by your practice partner, allow you to get that consistent grip. If you're a left-handed shooter and you've never shot right-handed or you don't shoot right-handed nearly enough, it's going to feel alien and foreign. But if you establish a proper grip and then have someone draw those lines on there, you're going to get it every time. As you practice it, you'll become more proficient, it'll start to feel more natural. Transition is simply opening up the grip, slipping the hand over. The reason we do that versus this is it's one hand moving at a time, doing it this way. We open up a gap to establish our purchase, move over, we got our grip. Versus trying to fight the gun with both hands moving at the same time. Under high stress, there's a chance you might drop it. This way is much more proficient. Now, uh, as most of the people who are going to be watching this are right-handed, uh, I thought it was beneficial to do a right-handed demonstration as well. Open up the gap, transition my hands over, and as you see, I have those lines on my hands again. Those will allow me to match up my hands and my proper grip. Once I have it established, I have someone draw that line. So as I practice this, which is something you can do at dry fire, you don't have to do it at the range, I get that consistent grip every time. Those lines match up, I know my grip's good, it feels good, I get used to that feeling, I get used to that repetitious feeling, so when I'm transitioning, using cover, or practicing these skills, I know I've got my grip every time. Alright, so what I've already talked about is, is how it's tactically correct to transition your weapon to the side that's going to expose on the piece of cover. So if I'm using cover such as this barrel, which would be concealment, because most rounds are going to penetrate it, but if it's all I got, it's all I got. So as I present to the the concealment and I get low behind it conceal as much of my body as I can if I need to use the right side of the barrel I'm going to transition the firearm to my right hand if I need to use the left side of the exposure I'm going to transition the firearm to my left hand now as I showed before all you're doing is opening up the back strap to get your other hand in threat to establish a grip on the way <laughs> Threat! Alright, so when we're using cover or concealment, we have to realize that uh, a piece of cover, a piece of concealment is, it can provide infinite cover or concealment as long as we can keep it between us and the threat. What that means is we do not have to be 12, 16, 18 inches off of our cover or closer. We can be 12, 16, 18, 20, 22 feet off of our piece of cover as long as it is between us and our threat. What are some advantages to that is we can take cover immediately. If, we, if a threat presents and we're right next to something that will provide really, really good cover, we can immediately go to that. If our cover is 6, 8, 10, 12 feet ahead of us, we can still use that piece of cover even though we're not right up on it as long as it's between us and our threat. threat. Good.
Gun. Threat! Alright, so on the drill you just saw, uh, I had a piece of cover, I moved to it, I was engaging my threats, transitioned from the left to the right, exposed less of my body as I engaged the threats, and then I found myself in a situation, at least the scenario called for, pulling back to additional cover if it was available because I was not equipped, properly equipped to deal with the threat or I needed to get out of the area for whatever reason. So instead of making a straight line for my, for my cover, I moved straight back utilizing as much of the cover as I could while still delivering accurate gunfire, which is the only cover we always have available to us. And then I moved to this piece of cover. Same situation. I ran into a situation where I was out of ammo, had to reload, utilize the cover, continued engaging my threats. If you look at these two pieces of cover, the shortest distance between them would be a straight line. However, if I were to move in a straight line from this piece of cover to this piece of cover, I will be exposed to my threats for a longer period of time than moving straight back and then making a right angle movement. All right, so what you've just seen here are two techniques of, for the use of cover as concealment, as well as transitioning the handgun from hand to hand. Um, in a future video, we're going to go over rifle because that's definitely a totally different technique when it comes to inner hand uh, interaction. But um, these techniques, you should definitely incorporate them into your dry fire practice as well as your live fire practice to give you those tools necessary to utilize cover and utilize cover effectively and quickly. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Aaron